Well, hello everyone. Just a quick one today. I'm in the middle of getting ready for the event. I've been trying to decide which tie to wear uh, this morning. And after uh, looking at the various different range of ties that I've got, I don't know how all these 70s monstrosities made their way into the wardrobe. Um, but anyway, after going through all the various options, I have decided, ironically, to wear the Tony Blair uniform and to eschew a shoe tie altogether. Um, maybe there's a reason that the Dark Lord doesn't wear a tie. It kind of looks cool. No tie, you know, bit of a uh, bit of chest showing. So, so anyway, I'm about to leave, but before uh, going, um, I wanted to uh, share some thoughts. I, I recently joined this platform, um, Telegram, that allows me to kind of type in more detail than I usually would on Twitter and elsewhere. And um, sometimes I find it quite clarifying just to kind of sit down and type, you know, it's more like a blog, I guess, than a, than a social media platform in many ways. And um, uh, it got me thinking that one of the uh, problems that we have on uh, the right, so to speak, is that um, when it comes to codifying the behavior of current elites, we have several competing meta narratives uh, for explaining it. And then on top of that, we have several different meta narratives for um, explaining like who exactly the elites are. Now, because I'm about to go out, I don't have time to uh, come up with any fancy graphics or anything. So I'm just going to take a screen grab of the of the Telegram posts that I made and you can um, and I'm going to read them because what I really want to do is start a conversation uh, when it comes to uh, this. And I thought that by codifying the various different options, it will actually help people understand exactly where they agree and disagree and um, help us as a group, I guess, come towards a semblance of the truth. So I would say there are six main theories that do the rounds uh, when it comes to the behavior of the current elites. Uh, the first one I will call the Britisher frame, which is one that simply says that what we see is just incompetence and human error at the top. Uh, that's the Britisher frame. Nothing's planned. Everything's just kind of haphazard. Yes, minister style um, incompetence. Uh, number two is that the uh, current elites are motivated by total power and control. This is what I call the conspiracy threat frame. The third one is uh, what you might call the mole bug frame. That is what we're seeing is emergent behavior that looks like a conspiracy, but in fact is just a kind of naturally emerging organic process. Um, number four is uh, what you might call the leftist populist frame. That is that uh, the elites are just driven by ever greater profit. It's all about money at the end of the day in big corporations. Number five, um, what you might call the forbidden text frame is that the elites are driven by historical revenge, um, driven by malice, a desire to enact total humiliation and destruction uh, on their historical enemies. Um and then number six is, I guess you might call the elite theory frame, which is that the managerial class must destroy the last vestiges of the old ruling class to secure their position. So those are six different ways of explaining the behavior of current global elites. And then, of course, there is the bespoke option of uh, some combination of the above. So you may like, I don't know, um, two and four for example or three and six or or, or whatever else uh, they're not all mutually exclusive uh, while it's obvious that these frames are not mutually exclusive it strikes me at the basic level that people on the right disagree about which one is fundamental clarifying these frames and thinking seriously about which one should be preeminent should help people come together or at the very least see what they really disagree over uh, and i think the coof has thrown a serious curveball into things and left many uh, sides uh, lost because uh, what's been happening over the pandemic uh, does not uh, easily fit into pre-existing narratives. So there's a bit of disarray, uh, a cat among the pigeons when it comes to that. 
Now, a sub-consideration of each of these frames is the question of who is actually in charge. And each one of the frames has their own particular answer to this. Let's go through them one by one. Number one, we have the incompetence frame. Uh, that is, the people in charge are just the government, or at most, the government as steered by the civil service. This is uh, what you see in Yes Minister, for example. Um, it's the idea that really the people, you know, it's the bumbling idiot Boris Johnson led by a couple of advisors. You know, it's what you see on the thick of it and nothing else. OK. The, number two, the conspiracy frame um, says something like the world is run by secret societies, which may or may not include people like the Rothschilds, um, likes of the British royal family, who may or may not be part of a, a satanic cabal, uh, or they may be lizards or whatever else, depending on the conspiracists that you're listening to. And uh, whether you like it or not, these people are definitely part of some of these circles that we run in. You see people constantly talking about these groups. Um, and so it's a frame that is in the mix. Uh, number three, we have the Muldbuggian frame. Uh, in which, of course, the decisive factor it, faction in control is the cathedral, the media and academia, who set the direction and the ideas for all the other factions, including the politicians and the business leaders. Moldberg thinks of the cathedral like the brain in the machine, not doing the bidding of the leaders, but actually controlling the leaders. OK, number four. Uh, in the leftist populist frame, the decisive faction are, of course, the corporations and the oligarchs who put profits before people. Uh, everything comes down to money uh, when you're looking at things through that leftist populist frame. Uh, number five, uh, we have the forbidden text frame, of course, and the decisive faction are, you know, sub the you know who's or some kind of power group within the you know who's um then in the elite theory frame the decisive faction are what pareto calls the non-ruling elite um this is similar in a sense to molberg's cathedral but the directionality is a little bit different in so much as they work in the service of the ruling elite and then post hoc rationalize them um, as such, if the ruling elite changes, the non-ruling elite will also change and uh, vice versa. So in Moldberg, the cathedral is the brain, OK? Whereas in elite theory, um, the cathedral is more like a kind of defense lawyer uh, than, than the brain. Um, you know, in, in, in other words, uh, if, the, if the power regime says jump... The cathedral says how high, whereas in the Moldberg conception, the cathedral says jump and the power regime says how high. You see, it's, it's, a, it's a subtle but a very, very key difference between um, how people like Pareto and Mosca thought of it and how Moldberg thinks of it. Anyway, the fact that people differ on who exactly is in charge as an unstated assumption, leads to all sorts of misunderstandings and disagreements, even with the very phrase elite. You know, when I say elite, I have a particular group of people in mind, um, you know, in the elite theory frame. But when um, people hear me say that, they may be thinking, well, I'm talking about the British royal family and, uh, you know, certain old money European families and things like this. Um, whereas uh, I don't really have those people in mind at all. So... Uh, it leads to a lot of misunderstandings and disagreements. The prospect of revolutionary action, that is action that's going to lead to regime change, on the right is therefore forestalled by the fact that people do not even agree on who is being overthrown. You know, a, a lot of people on the right like to have these ideas of the puppet masters. You know, the um, it's the front cover of the of the Kerry Bolton book, uh, Revolution from Above, but they don't agree on who the puppet masters are. And uh, I, I think this is a very, very important question to try to come to the bottom of, even if it means having potentially embarrassing disagreements with people, because the, the trouble with these frames is that each of the people who adopt them think that their frame is obvious, but it's only obvious to them. It's not obvious to everybody else. Um, so I, I think that, you know, 
it's time to maybe hash out some of these fundamentals again and to restate the arguments as to well who are the elite and why um even if it even if it leads to people you know people saying oh hold, hold on a second that's very blue pilled or whatever it's important i think to for everybody to be clear on who we mean um otherwise what hope is there of fighting these people when you don't even know who they are anyway um i uh, better get ready and uh, d drive up to the event um remember up until the end of the month my uh summer sale is on use coupon code summer 25 you can buy the trivium you can buy foundations of economics you can buy foundations of research you can buy all sorts yeah, all the courses on the academic agency you can even buy foundations of politics which is my amazing elite theory course which should be coming out next month uh and if not at the very very latest october all right i'll see some of you at the event no cigar stream tonight bye bye are you sick of hearing about Marx and Keynes? Do you want to know why neoclassical economics is so flawed? Have you ever wondered how to work out the marginal productivity of a burger bun? Do you want to level up your econ knowledge? Buy it now. £350. Foundations of Economics. Foundations of Economics. I'm here. Foundations of Economics. Get it now. Be sure to like this video and subscribe, and if you really like my content, maybe consider joining the channel or donating or maybe even buy a mug. I am grateful for all of your support. Now get out.